Hey guys, ever wonder about how people detect ghosts from the other side? Tonight, we're going to be talking about paranormal tech on computability. With a special guest, John Moss. That's right. Hey, welcome to another episode of Computability. I'm Scott. And I'm Jill. And tonight uh, we're coming to you live from Boca Raton with uh, John Moss. We're going to be talking to him about all the paranormal technology he uses to talk to the other side. Yes, that's right. He does uh, paranormal investigations mm -hmm. in the UK, and uh, we're going to be talking to him. But in uh, for just a couple seconds, I want to thank the sponsor of tonight's show, 1-800-PET-MEDS. Um, get 10% off of your pets, same exact high-quality medications, and have them delivered right to your door for free if you order over $39 worth. Uh, go to compute-ability.com, click buy here, and buy your pet meds. Uh, through our website to help computability out. Thank you very much. It'll help all of your cat's nine lives, okay? That's right. So, um, <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, uh, we're going to bring on, uh, without any any uh, wait, a do or anything else, we're going to bring on uh, Mr. John Moss. There he is. Oh, are we all? John, where are you? We, we, we don't <laughs> Hello. We, we In the ether. We can't see you. Are are you are you in this world or that world? Probably this world at the moment. This world. <laughs> Let me see if I can pull you I, in. Okay, I'm. I'm, I'm here going he to... comes. Right, I'm, Come I'm, on, uh, there he goes. You. Welcome. Yeah, yeah. There you go. There you go. <laughs> you made it. <laughs> yeah. You made it. Uh, the land of living. Well, <laughs> we've got you on the show because you've got um, a. Uh, you do paranormal investigations, and you are a medium mm -hmm. and a, a psychic. A psychic, well, uh, a psychic spiritualist medium. medium. I think you like to be called. Yes. What is the correct terminology? Well, yeah, that would be it. A spiritualist medium. Okay. Um, been that for many, many years. Yeah. Can, can you tell us a little bit about like how you got started in it, and uh, how did you uh, find out that you were a spiritual, a medium? How did you find out? How did you know? Medium. How did I know? I think it probably all started when I was a bit, when I was a child, really. Being the only child, mm -hmm. um, I just used to have loads and loads of imaginary friends all the time. Yeah. Um, and as a child growing up, you never question. Um, you just think that they're real, and you just, you know, you know, I just had all these people that were around me all the time, constantly. Um, and your parents, and at, at that age, your parents probably thought that you were just like every other kid; that it was no different. And they probably well, didn't yeah. didn't raise it, raise any red flags with them either. No, um, just apart from the fact that I was just constantly talking to people that weren't there. I mean, at times I must have thought I were going <laughs> mad because I was just constantly chatting and talking to people and talking to myself and mm -hmm. and, and that. Um, but to me, there were other people in the, in the room that were as real as what I'm talking to you uh, at this moment in time. And it wasn't until. I hit sort of about 14 when everyone else sort of starts to sort of go out and play football or your friends and start, you know, doing sports or going out with girls, that sort of thing. Right. Mm -hmm. And you're sitting having conversations with your friends about sort of when the old, when the world's going to end or, or what happens if the world does end or, yeah. um, you know, and stuff like that. And that's when I really started to see that there was a difference in the way I viewed things mm -hmm. to the way everyone else viewed things. So, so you saw people and you heard people. Correct. And, so, and dreamt as well. And so you Sorry. noticed that somehow you had an ability that other people don't have, and that's to uh, see or hear things that uh, from... And you found out it was paranormal, you think. You think it was ghosts? Is that what it ended up to be? Or how did you, how did you put... It's a ghost versus I'm seeing things. How does that work? Um... I don't know really. All that I can tell you is that it's just the way. It, it's not. It's not because it's not anything that I've actually questioned and sat down and, and actually thought. How does this work? When it just say, is well, the way you are. Right. 
Yeah, that's right. I can't, I can't give you a definite answer of, oh, you know, yes, if you, if you get up at six o'clock in the morning and you do this, then this will happen. Mm-hmm. Um, it's just one of them things that, that, that you, you just seem to, uh, seem to have. And to me, these people were just people. They were just, they looked a bit different. Right. I mean, because not only did I have people, I also used to see animals as well. So it wasn't just oh, people. Oh, that's interesting animals as well so you know it's not just a, a people thing um you know i mean i have a, a, a i mean i've uh, have a white dog that follows me around everywhere no i've never had a white dog right but i've had i've had other people tell me about this white dog but i've also had my friends come to my house and said and say oh we've just seen the white dog yeah I mean, mm-hmm. no, I, i've got two black cats at the moment so so, right. so, so as a kid, you, you you saw these things, and while growing up, you experienced uh, more and more, and realized that you were a little more alone on this. Wh- when did you start investigating um, all these sightings or these extraordinary things that you believed? Uh, and how were did out you there? like? Did you did you do it by yourself first with like an old tape recorder or something like that, yeah. and then like find a group or? Or did you join a group of people, and, and that's what got you started? Well, uh, at the, uh, at about, yeah, again, it all seemed to kick off around sort of 14, really. Um, I joined a, a, a first paranormal group when I was 14 mm-hmm. um, in, a, in a, um, a place near me called Stourbridge. Um, and um, we were sort of just young youngsters then, and we'd go and... I know this sounds really bizarre, but we would just hang out in graveyards just to see if we could see anything. Um, and oh, just wow. to see if we could feel anything, you know, um, and that sort of thing. Um, and so that's what sort of sparked it off. And then from there, I joined uh, a spiritualist church. And then from there, the, the, the things that I've witnessed through belonging to uh, a spiritualist church and the things that I've seen mm-hmm. would, would actually sort of blow your mind away, really, with the things I've seen. Wow. And there's been numerous many things, uh, from levitating pub tables to seeing people stand on stage, change with their uh, face, body yeah. type, uh, and everything. And people can argue that it's your imagination, but yeah. I know it's not. But so so, so you, you caught the bug, and you decided to start your own investigation service in the UK called Orbs. And let me show everybody uh, that. Um, there we go. This right here is Orbs uh, UK. Um, that's uh, uh, his website is orbsuk.co.uk, and uh, you've got a uh, site that's devoted to um, your paranormal uh, research and your paranormal uh, investigations. That's correct. Yeah, um, because I thought it was about time that rather than me, so, I mean, I really am not trying to convince anyone. Um, I don't need any convincing because I'm a believer. So well, you're, you, I'm not in, right, you provide I'm, a service for people, really, is right. what you do. You, you actually are very similar to our business. Yeah. And, you know, we do technical services, a different kind. But, I mean, you're in the business of providing a technical service for people, which is very interesting. And this is a very... A b- interesting and unusual branch of technology, I think. And Jill loves yeah. paranormal, any paranormal shows. She's totally caught the bug, you know, and so... Well, I, I'm, I'm, I'm very interested in it. Yeah. Me, I want to have some proof. And to me, if you're going to take and get some proof, what else do you use besides computers, electronic devices, okay? I mean, the, if there is a, another side, then... There should be a very blurred line between science and paranormal. And so how do you bridge those two? And what you've done, along with many other investigators, is taken technology and you're using it in your investigations to see if you can find uh, out more about the other side, what exists, get some information and that sort of thing, right? That's that's totally correct. Um, Yeah, and hopefully with the aid of technology and in the leaps and bounds that it comes on and with the, the leaps and bounds technology moves forward miles every day yeah that could be a real reality yeah and, and i have no doubt even if it's not me that doesn't capture it 
I have no doubt that people will capture it eventually. Right. And it just really is just a matter of time. In fact, um, the, the stuff that you're using is absolutely amazing. In fact, I'm going to show them a few of the things that you have that you use for your paranormal investigations, okay? So this one right here is a ghost trap. And generally, when you have a uh, apparition of some sort, <laughs> you're, you're using that to... Tr what? <laughs> what? You use ghost traps, don't you? No? Uh, yeah. Ma perhaps not as technical as that. Protein packs. Uh, I mean, pro proton packs. You use proton packs, right? <coughs> Come on. Yeah. yeah. Well, we, I've, got, I've got a, a vax in the back as well. That's yeah. bizarre. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. I'm just kidding with you. Um, no. That's bizarre. <laughs> well, that would look so cool if I turned up at an investigation with that on. Yeah. <laughs> You're ready, that man. You, 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 That's already you, given me ideas. You should, you should at least uh, get one of those to wear just to look super cool, right? That's right. It doesn't really have to do anything. No, actually, the equipment we're talking about is real equipment, real technology. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, this is a list of this technology. I'm going to go down what you have here, okay, on your website. And let's talk about them one at a time. First of all, you use an infrared trip beam. What the heck do you use an infrared trip beam for? Okay, well, a trip beam I can actually show you. Uh huh. Um, I've got it here. Um, this is your trip beam. So your trip beam sends an infrared sensor from this box here to this box here. And what you can do with that is, um, is you can either isolate a door. Say if someone's got a door that's moving. Hold them up, will you? Yeah. There you go. Yeah. So. So people can use this across a door. You can uh -huh. put it across a, a, a landing, an uh -huh. opening. Uh -huh. um, and then if there's anything that breaks that beam, you get a massive sound. Okay. It's, it's basically to rule out. If a door opens and this doesn't go go off, right. then basically what's made that door open? Right. You, you see what I mean? Right. So if this goes off, Right. Then either it's a person or but something has got to make to break the, to physically break the beam for right. this to go off. Otherwise, it won't go off. Gotcha. So if it doesn't go off and the door opens, and so that in connection with the camera can determine whether or not anything was there to break it. Correct. Gotcha. Now we're we're going to move on to the next one: digital voice recorders. Okay. Yeah. I know what a digital voice recorder is. Most people do. It's uh, it, it's instead of recording on tape magnetic you're you're using a, a device to record uh everything uh, through a little digital re but these are really good digital recorders these aren't these are nice ones right oh yeah this yeah. is on a this is a my uh yeah there you go yeah there there, you go. that's perfect right yep. it's uh, an olympus uh dictaphone yes uh, usb okay your files are pre-recorded in um, WMA format so there's no messing about you have no, you know you can just drag and drop them straight from this to that's your computer that's nice right. that's convenient it automatically saves everything in individual files but but it's you're, you're, you're trying to capture something called EVPs I that's mean correct. That's I, I know correct. I know what heebie-jeebies heavy are and I think I would get that doing your type of work but what the heck is an EVP okay well EVP it stands for electronic voice phenomenon. Okay. Um, okay. Now, um, there's lots. There's lots of reasons why we use a digital recorder to start with, and the reason why we use digital is because there's there's actually no physical workings within this. Yeah. Okay. There's yeah. just an SD card or whatever you want to put in there. Mm -hmm. Yes. Now, if you yes. use if you use an analog tape recorder, what you stand the chance of is you stand the chance of feedback if there's anything on the opposite side of the tape. Okay. And also, you, you, you've got mechanical workings, right. you see, right. that can be recorded and picked up right. while the tape's actually going. Right. Hmm. So, that's something with this that you can put completely rule out. Okay. Because obviously there's no mechanical workings. And what you're trying to, the, the theory is, is that this records what they call white noise. Mm-hmm. And, this, and when you're in a room and you ask a question, yeah. the white noise or the background um, that you pick up on this, can, the theory is that ghosts can actually be recorded on something like this. Right, that and you don't hear it when you're in the room, but it that gets recorded on the, the DVR. 
That's correct. That's right. It gets recorded on here. Um, some people can hear it, and that's called clear audience. Um, now, uh, I'm not particularly clear audience. Okay. Right. Um, so this is why I like to back up. Yes. Evidence. Okay. Which, which, um, which, which, of course, gives you the computability that you need when you're out there <laughs> looking for ghosts. <laughs> this is it, you see. Um, see, now, Tom, um, that, is, uh, that was a shameless plug. Yes. <laughs> oh, yes, definitely. Um, yeah, this, uh, I'm not into shameless say. plugs at all. No, no. <laughs> um, yeah, no, neither am I. No, oh, just stretching. Okay. <laughs> Hey, listen, I can do that as well. Yeah, right? you got yours on. <laughs> That's right. Touche. So l let's let's go down. Let's hit the rest of them here, okay? We have a um, uh, infrared beam spread with remote. Correct. Oh, yes. You got and one of those? This is this here. Oh, my this God. This is the infrared. Yes. With, okay. Now... Whereas the beam trip is a single line, right? Okay, this one sends out a complete spread, so this will cover an entire room rather than a doorway or a hall oh, that's or a nice. passageway. Okay, cool. Uh, so again, the same theory is y y you, y with this one. What you can use this one with is you could use that with what we call a trigger object. Now, a trigger object um, can be anything that is either deemed by the investigators, as in us, or if you go to a location and, and you, you have information from the owners, mm -hmm. say that, say that the, they've had a pen moving all the time, or they've had furniture moving, right. then what you could do is put this again in, in that room, and again, if anything moves in that room, if it doesn't set this off, the odds on that it, there could be something paranormal that's moving in that room because if there's anything that's human, animal, or anything else goes in front of this, this will go off. I got you. So, so a lot of these devices are used as a process of elimination. Right. That's correct, Jill. Yes. Right. Correct. And because the, the more you can eliminate human, animal, um, outside influences, noises in background, you know, the more of that you can totally eliminate. Then the more you can start to be look, you, the more you can look on the paranormal side right. rather than the normal side. Gotcha. Yes, and so um, we, we, you, you use a couple other uh, devices. One here. real quick question yeah, I have, and they've been asking in the chat room. Go ahead. Um, they're curious, John. Where does your accent come from? Where in the UK are you from? Where in the UK am I from? I'm actually from a place which is called. Um, the black country, and the oh, black the country. black country, of course. <laughs> That's it. Of course, of course, of course. Of course. Yes, um, the black country um, in our history, and probably the history of the world, really, w is renowned for steelworks, miners. Um, you know, um, because and because it's called the black country is because of the steelworks. What like major city is called, it near? The, the 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 major city that it would be is Birmingham, which is the second major city. I got uh, you. In, you know uh, what? Somebody in the room guessed Birmingham, so they were close. Very close. Ten stars and cookies, I think. There. <laughs> now, 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 there's a couple other items you use. So, uh, one is a laser spot thermometer. Okay. Yeah. Now I can understand some of the other stuff, but how would you be using a thermometer? to detect ghosts. I mean, there's something that's not there. You can't see it. Mm -hmm. So I guess you're trying to get its temperature. Why would you be getting a ghost temperature? Uh, it might be ill. We might have to go to the chemist. No, not really. <laughs> <laughs> Sick ghost. Well, this is the, this is the um, laser. Yeah, hold, laser hold, hold it still. Down. Hold it still. There you go. There you go. Yep, got it. Okay. Cool. Okay, now... This is just one that's used in conjunction with three thermometers that I have. Right. Uh, this sends a... I can't actually show you here. I don't know if you... Can you see that on my hand? Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, we can see that. Uh-huh. Yeah. So that, that now is giving me a temperature of uh, 87 degrees do, Fahrenheit. Do your, for that's my do, do, do your forehead. <laughs> there you go, look. What is it? <laughs> 
Um, 92. Now do your Probably. belly. <laughs> oh, I want to do no, it. I, I, just, I, I just want to take a temperature of everything once I see one of those. <laughs> anyway, okay. so they, they, they accurately take your temperature by using a laser and and uh, so right. so you're testing. Um, sorry, yeah, it's on a mm -hmm. um, a nine to nine to one spot ratio. Mm -hmm. That is the further away it goes, the bigger the beam and possibly the less accurate right but, but this would be used to do you know you would probably use this to do four corners of a room mm -hmm. to get average temperatures of a room mm -hmm. right but the other thermometer that we've got is this one here uh-huh okay now this I'll, I'll just put a reading on it for you can you see that reading 77.9 yep now this is a spot thermometer. This is this is again another spot thermometer, but this only measures temperatures that are this close. Okay. Okay. So whereas a beam, you can you fire. Right. This will only measure what's more or less in front of you. Right. And the the reason behind that is, is if somebody's saying that they feel a cold spot hanging in mid mid air. Okay. You can't you can't use this to test for that. Right. Because the beam will shoot straight the way through, right. and it only gives you a reading from what the beam's hitting. So what you need an ambient reading. Correct. That, well, you need something that's going to be able to test the temperature where you feel but, that but, cold. But, but, John, why are you testing the temperature? Are ghosts cold? Well, it's reported that some some ghosts, I mean, some ghosts come with feelings of being cold, some come with extreme heat, right. some come with bad smells. Right. So, again, if you've took an average temperature of a room that is, you know, sort of, I'd say 70 degrees. Right. Right? And then all, you go into that room, and again with other, I mean, because I've got EMF meters as well, and then you, you go in and someone says, I've got a cold spot there. We want to know what's making that cold spot. Is it a draft from outside? Right. It could be a ghost, or right. it could be something else. But if you take your baseline readings first, again, you can rule out. So it could indicate that there's a possible entity, or there's a possible spirit, or a possible ghost there with a temperature change. So, so, a, so a temperature change, and uh, I, I think I, I heard something like. Uh, if there's a temperature change, it's because it takes a lot of uh, the ghost or all the energy out of the air and leaves cold spots. Is that yes? Is I that mean, pretty is much that, the, the idea? There is that. Yeah, there is that. That, that is the idea. Um, yeah. Ghosts need energy to build up, um, and this is why there's a lot of. This is why you take constantly take spare batteries with you. Right. Um, and that because they drain power from not only people there but any other sources that can find to build their energy yeah. to appear now, and then when they appear they, that can cause a cold spot and, and finally uh, well, you've got two other ones you have a, uh, uh, a EMF reader no, well I've got this and this and I also have another temperature right and this is really good mm -hmm. because this this will give you again this one here okay cool right uh huh right now this one is an inside outside thermometer right so you have you can take the temperature inside but right. it will also give you a reading externally as well right so again that that can rule out any other right it, and then you have something to for, for electric ma uh, electromagnetic forces or something like that emf Electro, yeah electromagnetic fields yes um, fields oh so this is one there you EMF go reader. And yeah. so with that, you're detecting the magnetic fields that a entity could be producing, right? That's correct. So That's something correct. passes in yeah. front of it, it's able to detect that. And then finally, finally, you use a, a, a Sony night vision camera. Yes, I do. And this is an so, excellent piece of kit. So it's let's take a look. Oh, my God, look at that thing. Uh, oh, yeah. So use a high, yeah, nice. high definition or a hard disk drive, I mean. Yeah. Carl, Carl Zeiss. Oh, very nice. T touch screen. Right. There. Um, automatic zoom. Uh, you can also take uh, pictures with this. It's not just a camera. You can turn it into just a point and shoot camera. Cool. So you can take still pictures with it as well. Um, and what uh, is a excellent what, what, what is the model number of that? This is a, a DCR SR36. Okay. So, and uh, also. Um, 
that uh, so, so you, you you're putting that on night mode so you can detect infrared so you're looking That's outside right. this, the normal spectrum that we can see and then right. and you're able to see perhaps you know an entity or something paranormal out of it that we can't normally That's detect that's correct. Now, I've, I've got a few videos I want to run down real quick, and it's a few videos that you've um, been part of in the past, or you, you produced, and so we're going to just go down the list. This is a big orb or dust going down right here. Now, these are, now. who made these recordings? These are John's. These are John's. Okay. These are my recordings of investigations that I've done over the last few few months. Okay, so you Oh, so these are fairly recent. Yeah. These are these are fairly recent, yeah. Okay, so I'm definitely. gonna play I'm gonna play the first okay. one. Okay. So Arthur, are you in this room? And it, that yes. one's a really hard one okay. to say. So Arthur, are you in this room? Oh, that's really dark. Yeah, really dark. But um, on the stream, it's it's a little bit lighter. This is big orb or dust going down right hand side. So you haven't determined if it's an orb or if it's dust. No, because it's too quick. But the it's the occurrence, you see. Okay. What it is, I'm asking for. Are you in this room, Arthur? And then we get that happening as I'm saying, Arthur, are you there? Right. And then you get that sort of. And also, you can't hear it there. But the the EMF meter was also going off and answering and 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 making noises in that particular room as well, which then previously we'd done the baselines and there was no there was nothing there was nothing to make the EMF meter go off. Well, there was no, there was now recorded, you know, nothing to. Right. Yeah. You What's know. the name of your YouTube channel? It's Orb uh, S U K. Orbs U K. Yeah. Okay. Orbs U K. Okay, so I'm, I'm gonna just run down the videos here. Okay. So here is the second video. This is. It looks like a cot or something, and then all of a sudden a orb flies down or something. Bedroom one is what we're looking at. So I'm gonna play that again. They can see it. There it goes. So that's something that you caught there. We'll oh, yeah, down a I couple see that. of them. Yeah. This is another one here, landing. So you're catching little things moving around. Can they see? Yeah, they can see that. I'll play that's that right. again for them. That was pretty clear. Yep. <laughs> Are there any um, audio that you have? Hold on, oh, unfortunately, uh, I don't have any audio. That's the next thing that I'm looking at. Th these were all captured. Um, th this one in particular, the landing, these was all captured in another piece of equipment that I've got, um, which is my CCTV camera, w w cameras, which is an excellent piece of kit. Um, again, I think it's another must-have. Um, there is audio facilities on that, but yeah. I haven't got the audio set up. But again, that's something that I'm looking at mm -hmm. as, a, as, a, as a future thing. Um, but again, it's the the one that you're looking at there with the with the bedroom and the yeah. telly. Again, that was that was in a room of uh, someone that had passed away, and I can assure you that there's no one in that room. There's all double glazing in that room. Yeah. There's nothing to make that. There's no updrafts. There's no. There was no drafts in that room or anything like that. Right. For, for that to cause that. Right. Um, to appear. Do you um, guys you know, seal? Do want, do you, I'm sorry. Do you guys seal like the air conditioning vents or heating vents or anything like that? That's right. I mean, we we've, we've, we we make sure that the electricity is turned off as much as we can. Mm -hmm. um, we make sure that the there's no sort of fans blowing. There's no draft. There's no windows open. That sort of thing. To, again, it's to cancel out any possibilities or right. any interference from outside things. John, um, John, we got a few more. We're going to go over here. We've got a couple minutes left. Um, let's see. We've got this is Scott's Scott Room TV. I don't know how that got in there, but okay. So there's a little orb flying by, and that's coming. So you can see here comes another one. We played this a second ago. Okay, and then we're gonna play a couple more that you've captured. This is Can't Move MP3. So I'm gonna play that. Now, I'm not really sure what's happening in this one. Can't move? Yes, what it, what it is, if you look at the... No, yes, I'll tell you about this. The camera, if you look at the camera and you watch the screen, the camera's actually moving. Now, the camera was fastened. This camera here right. was fastened on a tripod, which was on the floor. There was, again, there's nobody in that 
there's nobody in that room at all at right. that particular time. That that is, uh, but the camera is moving. Right. And oh, that's weird. I think what, that's what? the best one out of all of them because it really shows that there's some form of movement going on. You know, just taking a video and just putting it there. And you say it was on a stable, stable uh, yeah. place, right? That's right. So what could, you know, I mean, it, I'm not, I, I have no, where the camera was focused, what, mm -hmm. what the owners were saying there, mm -hmm. although it, there's nothing that's actually captured on camera apart from the camera moving, the, the owners are saying that they, they witnessed like a smoke yeah. or, or a cloud that appeared and there was a face that appeared and that's where the camera's pointing but okay. it's also moving there. So yes. is it somebody trying to move the camera? I don't right. Know. Cool. Yeah, That's interesting. Well, I, I think um, I, I think you're doing everything according to what a lot of people are doing out there these days, and they're taking their electronics and they're using them for alternative reasons. Uh, John found a really great use for taking your everyday electronics, and some of them are a little more than everyday. They're they're kind of really nice temperature uh, devices or uh, you can really detect uh, small fluxes in the uh, electric, uh, what is it called, the uh, magnetic forces that are around magnetic you. Magnetic fields. Yeah, magnetic, magnetic fields. Field, yeah. Um, also, he's using cameras uh, in a different way than they were meant to be. Uh, you're supposed to be using night shot, but he decided to use them, hey, you know, if it's good enough for... Uh, you know, uh, all the other people out there. You're going to give it a shot, and you're finding you're you're finding things. You're finding disturbances and changes right. and things moving. That's so. right. That's right. I mean, the the unfortunate thing with the paranormal is that there's no, no th th there's no sort of one particular test that you can say right. If this test works, then it is definitely paranormal. Right. Right. Th th it doesn't exist. Right. It doesn't exist. Um, you know. So because of that. It's still very a thin line on of, of what could this be, on what could that be, or it right. could be this, or it could be this. So you know, but but I do, I, as I said at the beginning, I, I do firmly believe that eventually, I think people will get something. Yeah. Um. You know, and will get something because it is there. Yeah. And there is more to things in life than this than our world, without a doubt. Um, well, do me a favor, know. please get back with us if you catch more oh, stuff. Oh yeah. I want, you know, um, you, we'll have you right back on it. If you have anything that you say, Scott, you got to let, let everybody see this. this. is some great footage, great evidence. Then please come back and we'll show it on our show. Definitely, definitely. Yeah, because I think so, paranormal yeah, tech is tech like any other tech. And, you know, it, you're out there spending your time and helping people do it. I think it's very cool. Now, if you want anybody to, uh, we'll just give a throw out to the website one more time. Uh, that is... I got uh, it. Orbsuk.co.uk. That's O R B S U K.co.uk. And uh, uh, do you want them to contact you for any reason? Yeah, or? log on. If anybody's got any views, if anybody's got any comments, there's an email address there as well. Send us emails. If you've got any pictures that you want us to put up, then send us them. We've got a, a gallery there. We can put them up for you. Um, so yeah, that's comments, great. Anything. Anything that you want to do, email me, fine. The only thing is, is unfortunately, I can't get to the States to do any investigations. Damn! Well, no. you never know, you know, never say never. You've got all the old stuff over there anyway. That's right, you've got the cool places over there. A lot more dead people over there. Well, there's more <laughs> history in the buildings. Yeah. Over here, everything, nothing's, it, very, very rarely do you find anything over 100 years old here. Yes. A building. You know what I mean? They knock stuff down and rebuild here a lot. Yes. Okay, well, we're going to say goodbye to uh, John Moss. But he's going to stick around a little bit um, and uh, answer some questions. And I know that there's some people in the um, in the chat room that, that wanted to make a, talk to him a little bit and about some experiences that they had. Mm -hmm. um, so we'd love to do that. We're just going to wrap our recording up and uh, might even be able to... Uh, see how John feels about maybe doing some auric readings that would um, be fun. through video Skype. So it's going to be an interesting show that will continue. So hopefully you're sitting here watching us now live, not watching this recorded. So we'll see you on the next episode of Computability. Thanks for coming. Uh, I'm Scott. I'm Jill. And uh, this is John going away. That's John. There he goes. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Thank you, Mr. Bye. Moss. See you later. Have a good one. Hasta la vista. <laughs>
and happy computing. Peace.